Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, listen, today is a special day. Wherever you are, plan to be with us by 5 p.m. West African time today. We're going to be having an amazing time, amazing time of worship an amazing time in God's word. I'm expecting the Spirit of God to do mighty things in our midst. So wherever you are, if you're in the city of Abuja, just find your way to the Three J's Hotel in Otako District. Find your way there by 5 p.m. If you're not in Abuja, join us online. You know, all our platforms will put up the link so that you can join us. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, now is the time to do so. So you can follow us live on YouTube. Listen, listen. This meeting is so important. I know it's important in the heart of God. Because when he commanded us, the things the Lord began to speak to me and instruct me concerning this meeting have made me realize why it's important that I invite you specially. Because you see, we can all be on earth and God is speaking, yet not everybody is hearing him. I told you yesterday, Noah must have had family members around. Noah must have had cousins, brothers, sisters around. But in the day God spoke, for 120 years, Noah was building that ark. People mocked him, but he continued because he had heard the word of the Lord. And eventually, he got into the ark with his family, those whom God had spoken to him about, and then the animals. Think about it. There are animals that God saved. But there are lots and lots of human beings that died. The same thing with Lot. You remember when God went, sent angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot had other children beyond the two daughters he had in his house. And the Bible says he went to them and told them, Hey, come! Spoke to his in-laws because those ones were married. Come, this city is about to be burnt down. The Bible said they laughed him to scorn. These were Lot's children. They died in that destruction. And Jesus had said that exactly like in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. People will be doing everything that they are doing. Yet, in the midst of all that noise, God will be speaking. So it's not about hearing God alone. It's about hearing God tell you what is important. It's not about what you desire to hear from Him. It's about Him telling you what is topmost on His mind. My prayer for you, in, with all sincerity, is that you will begin to hear that thing that is important in God's mind. So when I tell you to come for this meeting, the purpose is this, that your mind will be reshapen. See, after this meeting, I'm trusting the Spirit of God that His work with you will go into a new dimension. That you will begin to understand perfectly what his mind and his will is for you. Praise God. So when I say I'm inviting you, it's not just a normal meeting, it's not just a normal program. So plan for this today. Set an alarm. Don't miss this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. 
Let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Join me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The book has been opened. And it's been opened for you. It's been opened because God has had you in his mind all the while. It's been opened because that which he has written, that which he has written concerning you must surely come to pass. Judgment is beginning already on the earth. What you see happening in the nation of Israel is a sign to the whole world, especially God's children. So we see the physical sign taking place there. But he that has an ear will begin to hear the Spirit say something to him. I'm telling you the truth. This is not a time to wait for a prophet to speak. Uh -uh. Because the prophet you're expecting to speak seriously will be desirous to hear God for their own instructions, not to hear for you. We are entering the season where no one will have your time. So if you've not developed hearing and understanding God for yourself, I'm sorry to tell you this, you are about to enter the most troubling stages of life. You see, everything God does is good. But there is always a shaking before that good. Jesus gave a story, parable about the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish, but there were ten virgins. So even the foolish ones were able to maintain their virginity. And these ten virgins were waiting for one thing. They were waiting for the bridegroom. And they waited. Some, the wise ones, took enough oil. The foolish ones took just the oil they would need from in their own calculation. The wise ones knew they were entering into a lifelong thing. The foolish ones were just living for the moment. So the moment the bridegroom delayed his coming, guess what happened? Their oil finished. And when the announcement came that the bridegroom is here, they began to look for oil. So much so that they had to leave to go and buy oil outside. And guess what? The bridegroom waited until the foolish ones left. Then he showed up. How do I know he waited? Because he knew that the fact that they were all virgins doesn't mean that they are all wise. So he gave them the patience test. And this is the same test God gives to all his children, the patient test. So the foolish ones couldn't stay longer because they did not plan to stay that long. And when they left, he showed up. We are all children of God. But even as children of God, are you wise or are you foolish? No matter what desires are in your heart, no matter what thoughts are in your heart, are you wise or are you foolish? Your decisions will reveal that. Your consistency in the things you do with God will reveal that. Some are just with God for the next miracle. Some are just with God for the next breakthrough. Oh, oh, pastor, if God does this for me, I will do something marvelous. I will build a big church for him. I will do this, I will do this. They are all in for just that miracle. 
Jesus himself said to those Jews, you know, when, after he fed the 5,000, the following day, they all came, they stormed the place looking for him. He says, you are looking for me, not because of the miracle, because you ate and you were full. So those people came to Jesus, not even, they were not even particular about the miracle. The end result of the miracle was that they ate food and they were full. So they didn't need to go home to buy food. Or to, you understand what I'm saying? So they felt, look, let's go again for that man's meeting. We will eat again. So the miracle was not their issue. The miracle, the, the food was what they were after. If the miracle was something else, they wouldn't have but I said we've seen it. We've seen it already. But because they felt again today we might eat. Let's go back. So Jesus said to them, you're seeking me not because of the miracle, because you ate and you were full. Go for the food, for the bread that will last forever. And what is that bread? His word. That's what the Lord is saying to you in this day and in this time. Go for the word. Go for the word. Now, when I say go for the word, I'm not saying go read your Bible. Uh-uh. See, we're growing into maturity. And as we grow into maturity, we have to tell you the truth. I have to tell you the truth. The word of God is not by reading the Bible. When you read the Bible, you must desire to hear the voice of the one that you're reading about. Because when you just read the Bible, you're reading about him. You know the word of God when he begins to speak to your own heart. That's when you will know his voice. That's when you will know the word. And I found this out. Whatever God tells you, you will never forget. Never. Because the word of the Lord coming to you is an experience on his own. So sometimes when we speak and give dates and time, and we're talking about something that happened 20 years ago. It's not because we crammed those things. It's because those things are life. So anytime our mind gets in there, it comes alive because it is the word of God. Most times when we say that, we say most, most, most preachers of the word, when, when they say that, they say that in respect to when the word of God came to them. You can't forget it. Because everything comes at you. I pray for you. If, if this has not been your experience, I pray that the Lord will be merciful to you. There is nothing, nothing, nothing. See, I spend my days every day looking for that word. Is that all you do with your life? Yes. Eh, don't you think? Uh -uh. That's all Jesus did. <laughs> God. Yes. You, you, you remember the disciples when, when there was a um, problem amongst the people. And they thought to themselves, how do we handle this thing? So they said, okay, you know what? Choose seven men among you. Who have these great qualities and let them handle this business is it for we who will spend our time in prayers and in ministry ministration of his word now that's why you know it, it's so amazing you know, whenever i talk about this that's why the the quality of men that they asked for they say, number one, they must be full of the Holy Ghost. They must be full of wisdom. They must have good character, in other words, good reports. Now, why were these three things so important? So now you, you realize they were not talking about immature people. They look for really matured people to handle the business of tables. But today, we look for immature people and we give them that assignment. That's why you see a lot of problems around. Because men that can handle disputes 
are men who have developed themselves in the wisdom of God. So even at the moment of dispute, they can connect with heaven and God will give them the wisdom they need for that time and they will fix that situation. That's why they ask for those qualities. And you say, when you find these three qualities, and, and, and you see, whatever you're doing with men, if you have a choice, look for these qualities. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, and have good reports. How do you know the person have good reports? Find out. What do people say about the person? Even Jesus had to ask us, who do men say that I am? He asked his disciples. And imagine, nobody said, some say you are the devil. Praise <laughs> God. They say, some say you are Elijah. Some say you are uh, Moses. Some say you are one of the prophets. And then Jesus said, for the benefit of the you, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up. He said, I know. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So find out good reports, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom. If you have this kind of friends around you, you hardly get into trouble. You're making friends, be smart. Look for men, women of course, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom and have good reports. You see, because you cannot be full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom and not have good reports. You will not be a troublemaker. Now, we make our own kind of trouble, of course, you know. <laughs> Praise God. We are troublesome to the devil. We are troublesome to the children of the devil. But to the children of God, we are blessed. And whenever the sound of our name comes, it is blessed. But then, you know, we are hated by the death because of what we represent so listen as god is speaking about opening the book it has begun he's not speaking in the future it has begun so the event you're seeing on the earth is moving in one direction and i tell you this you can write this down the kingdoms of this world Every one of it will become the kingdom of our God. There is nothing that have happened on this earth, Kaliba Sopredika Surya, that you think happened by chance. No, God was behind it all. And now you are going to begin to see the reason because he's opening the book. His very thoughts, his very heart is going to start coming out. And in this season, stay around people who know and understand the voice of God. So that there will be a great influence to you. And you too. Don't just hang around them and say, you know, like some people say, say ah, me, I'll stay around you so that uh, if you're going by rapture, I'll grab your legs. We, mu we must go together. You know that won't work. <laughs> God. It won't work. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for you today. As the Spirit of God is doing His work, you will be found in the midst of it for good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen. It's 5 p.m. today. 3J's Hotel, Otako District in Abuja. If you're not in Abuja, follow us online. Link up to our different platforms, especially on YouTube. Subscribe right now. Put on the notification so that when we come on, you would receive it. God bless you. Bye.